Hey everybody, this is HD. Welcome back. This is going to be the next HD Daily Ladder. And I know that I said I was going to do it Monday through Thursday at the very least. Unfortunately, uh, I had something happen on Thursday. So this is Thursday's Daily HD Ladder. I know it's a little bit belated, but we are going to be back on schedule, hopefully, uh, starting on Monday. So this is, once again, another Zerg versus Terran. Hopefully I can redeem myself for the last loss yesterday. And it is going to be on Zelnaga Caverns. Now, I do want to say I just ran out and bought a new StarCraft 2 account. This is so I can play Terran and Protoss on without having to worry about tanking my rating all the way down to zero. And I was wondering, what do you guys want me to name this second account? Uh, post down below, and I'm probably going to consider the top three uh, voted up comments. So just post a comment down below. Whatever name you guys want, it can be... It can be uh, Razor Brow, it can be uh, Pink Eye, it can be, I don't I don't know, whatever you guys want it to be. Just post it down below. I'll take the top three funniest names and I'll make them my, my new, my secondary alternate account name. So yeah, anyways, this is going to be a Zerg versus Terran once again. And this game, I'm actually going to be opening up with 14 gas, 14 pool, rather than opening up with 14 hatch. Now. The last game I casted, I opened up 14 Hatch because it was on Jungle Basin. It's a very nice map to open up with an early expansion on. Although it's not the best for late game Zerg play, you can still get that early expo because of the way the map is designed in the beginning. Now, on a map like Zelnaga Caverns, I'm not all that comfortable with going 14 Hatch against either Terran or Protoss or even Zerg, which pretty much makes all three races. And the reason for that is because it's such a wide open natural, and a lot of games nowadays, Terrans will be very aggressive in the early game. Excuse me, my phone is ringing. I know, I haven't changed my dog barking ringtone yet. I need to change that. But it is, um, this is a very difficult map to hold off any kind of a 2 racks aggress aggression. And it looks like my opponent is opening up with two barracks. As you guys can see, there are two barracks right there at the front door. So I know there's going to be some kind of a mass marine attack. And so I better best get that drone out of there, go to the Zelnaga Watchtower where it's useful. It's going to die anyways. And um, I'm going to get my hatchery around 21 slash 22 supply. And the reason for that is because, you know, if you go for a hatchery early on, like 14, like I said, the two racks can crush it. But you don't want to get the hatchery too late. 21 supply is a good time to get your second hatch down if you're going 14 gas, 14 pull. You'll have about two or four zerglings out. Speed will be on the way. And note that I'm not pulling my drones off gas. My drones are going to continue mining gas. The reason for that is because... <laughs> no, I don't want to do best three, best of three one v ones. Please don't message me, guys, saying you want to do a best of three with no six pulls. I mean, come on. Uh, <laughs> anyways, I don't want to pull my drones off gas because I'm actually gonna need a banelings nest against two racks aggression. You guys all know speedlings, even you know zerglings, even with speed, they're really not that good against a handful of marines, especially if someone who micros and uses the scoot and shoot maneuver. So. Um, I'm gonna get some banelings. It looks like my opponent is gonna be going for two racks and a command center. So it's always a good idea to run up your marine, your zerglings. Even if you lose two, you can still scout the inside of the Terran base. You can get a pretty decent scout off without having to sacrifice an overlord. So I was able to see the command center. I know what my opponent's plan is. He's gonna be aggressive and then at the same time he's gonna try to secure his command center. So based on that, I know that once I hold off the early aggression, I'm going to be able to safely pump drones. Uh, of course, there's still a 10%-ish chance my opponent might not even go for the command center. Maybe he canceled it and he's just going to go all out marines. But I'm counting on the fact that he's not going to do that. And hopefully I'll be able to scout and ensure that he is indeed going for his command center. So here comes a couple of banelings. Whatever I can afford, note that I've been mining gas off of one extractor this whole time, so I do have enough uh, gas for banelings. Looks like my opponent finally has some marines. Now, the most important thing here is to surround with your zerglings, allowing your banelings to get in and do the damage they need to do so he cannot run away. And there comes the surround, and the banelings running in and doing the damage they need to do so that you can survive that two racks aggression. So it looks like it looks like I was able to hold that off and now I'm going to make sure that my opponent indeed is going for that command center and it looks like there are a couple of bunkers going up here. So that tells me most likely he is indeed going for the bunker. I'm going to go ahead and try to pick off a couple of SCVs. 
do a little bit of harass damage, bring in a couple of my banelings and keep my opponent on the back foot. This is basically just to tell my opponent, you know what, you're not getting this command center easily. I'm going to be aggressive. And this is going to force my opponent to throw up even more bunkers, get more marines. He might not feel safe getting his command center for a little bit longer. He might wait to get more marines out, more, more bear bunkers, and he's not going to want to pump as much SCVs. So all of that was just designed to keep my opponent scared. And now's the time when you can just press S and then just hold D down. If you're a Zerg player, you know what that is. Select drones, D for mass drones. And here comes my flood of drones coming out of my two hatcheries. And of course, getting your technology up, getting the lair out. Um, and basically getting up to that a point where you can play into the mid game. This is a transition from the early game to the mid game. And Zerg of, Zergs, of course, love the mid and late game. They, they especially love the late game. They're not so much an early game race, unless, of course, you're doing some kind of cheese, baneling bust, roach bust, six pool, uh, three 1v1, six pool for the win. Uh, so yeah, that's not going to be the case here. We're gonna be going into the mid game with my lair up. And around this time, you do wanna think about getting that third hatchery. Now it looks like my opponent did indeed grab his natural. Note that that was delayed. He had his command center done for a very long time, but he didn't feel safe grabbing it until I had uh, until he knew or had a, a feeling that he was safe with enough marines. So he finally decided to grab it after I was aggressive. But at this point, I'm definitely ahead. I've got my natural for a much longer time. I've got more saturation, most likely. And I'm, of course, going to get a scout in right now. I'm going to use my Overseer. As soon as my lair is done, you always want to morph at least one Overseer. Bring it in. Drop a Changeling. Don't ride the Overseer in there because there's always going to be Marines inside of Terran's base. So drop a Changeling and then do some scouting. So here comes my Overseer. Note as well that during all this time, I am getting my third hatchery. So you do want to get your third the same time the Terran gets the second. So, it looks like I just got a pretty good scout off. My opponent is going to be going pretty much mass bio. Uh, he has a factory down, most likely for dropship play. And actually on this map, dropships can be very, very effective. And to deal with that, you need to spread your overlords out. So notice I have my overlords surrounding my opponent's base on all sides. I can see when dropships come. And it looks like my opponent is going to push out once again. And because I control those Zelnaga watchtowers, I see my opponent pushing out. I know to produce attacking units now. Before that, all you want to do is just drone, 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 and then you want to build attacking units once you see your opponent coming. So here comes my Zerglings and my Banelings. I should be able to hold this off unless I miss Micro very, very badly. I'm going to wait until I get a couple more Zerglings. No, actually, I'm just going to go in. And there we go, bringing the Banelings, getting those fragile Marines, and of course, using the Zerglings to surround those Marines, making sure they can't run away. And once again, holding off yet another Terran attack. So this is of course when you want to actually take out those rocks between your third and your second, which is going to make that reinforcing route much easier for your units to kind of run across to your third in case you need to defend it, or you know, in case, yeah, in case you just need to maneuver drones back from the natural to the main. So I'm going to take out those rocks, and then right after that, I'm going to go for the gold rocks, and of course try to get that fourth hatchery up. Zerg, as you know, is all about getting as many hatcheries as you can. It's all about infesting more and more bases, getting as much drones as you possibly can get. And you really want to call the cutoff point around 75 drones. That's the optimum amount of drones. You don't want to go over that because that's when it starts to cut into your, your army supply. And you don't want to be under 75 for the late game because then you're not going to have enough economy uh, to keep up with a macro style game. So it looks like I'm going to drop my changeling once again, get a scout off in my opponent's base. That is a spire going up inside my main. Uh, and you eventually, like I said, you always want to transition into Muta Baneling play. It's really the best composition versus Terran. You can also bring in some roaches if your opponent is going Thor Hellion. Roaches are great against Thor Hellion, but you have to be careful because Thor Hellions come out of the factory and out of the factory also comes the dreaded siege tank. And roaches are not so bueno against siege tanks. They, they actually just die very easily to tanks uh, when they're in siege mode. So you do have to be careful. You, you can mix in some roaches if they have Thors and Hellions, but you don't want to overemphasize the roaches uh, because then they can switch over to that mech. They can also go into pure marauder mode uh, if they have the barracks up. So you do want to be careful when you're going roaches against Terran. 
Uh, looks like I am getting my upgrades, carapace, and melee attack since I'm focused so heavily on ground. And of course, as soon as my spire is done, I have all that gas and minerals saved up so I can pump a bunch of mutalisks. Unfortunately, I, my larva timing is a little off, so I don't have too many larva ready. Um, but as you guys can see, I do have an auxiliary hatchery, 